I like big slabs. I cannot lie. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're finally getting around to the dining room table. This is a project I've been wanting to do for over two years now. Uh, it's, it's finally coming along and it is massive. It's almost 11, well, it's longer than 11 foot long and longer than four foot, uh, wider than four foot at the widest point. It's a big, big beefy table. Uh, and I'm going to be doing this whole series in the, the format I did for the side table. And I'm going to be going into great detail in every single step. So if you want to follow along and you want to build something like this, you can do so. Um, I will eventually have plans available. I do not have them right now um, as I haven't quite figured out what I want to do for a couple steps on this. Once I get that and I decide what I want to do, I'll have plans available probably about halfway through the build. Um, but we will see how that comes out. So if you want plans, um, keep an eye on my website and I will tell you in which video, hey, they're available now. Yes, we're going to be having a lot of fun with this build. Here is a picture of the SketchUp file I have for it, and you can see it is kind of a trestle design. I've stealed from several different people on a couple different tables to find a design that I kind of like. It will be covered in Celtic carving on the bottom. The whole base will be made out of elm, and uh, this will be a, a significantly heavy, heavy table. The slabs, each slab is about 200 pounds a piece. Um, so the top with all the epoxy will probably end up being right around 400 pounds, maybe a little bit over that, uh, and probably another 100, 100 uh, maybe 120 or so from the base. So all told, over 500 pounds, a quarter ton in this table. <laughs> but uh, let's actually go ahead and take a look at the tabletop on this. So the tabletop itself will be these two slabs, and these are red oak that I got from Matt Cremona. When I was up at his place, uh, he gave me a killer deal on these two slabs, and I'm really looking forward to working with them. They are two and a half inches thick. Once they're milled down, they'll probably end up being about two and a quarter. Um, yeah, actually, I might end up taking this down to like uh, just a hair over two inches thick. Still a really solid, massive um, slab. They have a whole lot of weird inclusions and cracks and bug holes. There are bug holes all throughout them and really cool coloring in this um, the, from being dried outside. This is going to be a, a great tabletop to look at all the time. Uh, here at the thinnest point across, it's 41 inches. Uh, down there, tip to tip, it will be 47 inches. And then across here, bulge to bulge, it will actually end up being almost 50 inches. Uh, so it's a big table, 11 foot long, <laughs> yeah, um, I'm going to need help carrying this upstairs, so if anyone's free when I get this done, well, let me know. So the trestle base from this will actually be made out of some elm that I got uh, almost well, well over two years ago now. This is back when I first started the channel out, and I did a video on chopping the tree down with a friend of mine. And uh, to say thank you for helping me, he gave me a couple slabs uh, from that elm tree. So we'll be using that to make the base for this. And yes, the base will be covered in Celtic knot carving. I want to kind of give it that, uh, that natural-esque uh, feel that you get from the, the Celtic feel. Uh, having the, the straight lines, but still having all that organic carving in there. I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing that with the live edge on this. Now, as you can see, there are two very large voids in these, and my guess is around three gallons of uh, epoxy that it's going to take to fill those. Um, I will be filling them with epoxy, but I haven't quite figured out exactly what I want to do right now. My wife and I are thinking beach glass in the bottom and having clear epoxy so you can see down through it. And one of the nice things about the clear epoxy is that you can actually uh, see all of the coolness of the wood grain and the bug holes inside. So I'm really wanting to bring out the wood and not really show the epoxy. Um, so using clear is probably maybe slightly tinted. Uh, we'll be figuring that out. Speaking of epoxy, I'm playing with a couple different mixtures, different colors, um, different metallics, different dyes, different additives. And I'm laying this out in here, this tray that I use for actually testing epoxy. Um, and I can actually see all the different colors and I know what I put into each one. So I can kind of have an idea of what will it look like uh, once they all cure up. I just finished these, so these are all still wet. So I'll give me these about 24 hours and then we'll come back and actually see it. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to be going with a clear and then possibly uh, some tinting or metallics on top. I don't know. I haven't quite figured that out yet. For the epoxy, I will be using this Eco Epoxy. Um, I really like this stuff. I've used it once before in the past, and it's, it's fairly good. If you, if you uh, mix it one-to-one, -one, A to B, um, you get a slightly more rubbery surface, and it takes a little longer to dry. But what you can do is you can actually mix 
two parts resin to one part hardener, and it will dry a little bit faster, um, and it will be a much harder um, surface that is better for, for tabletops. So the two to one, um, they've been telling me that they will eventually be coming out with a product that's already mixed two to one, um, but for right now, you just get uh, two parts of the resin to one part of the hardener, and you can do the same thing. But then I'm gonna leave a little bit on the top so that I can put in a UV epoxy, uh, which is this, which is a much, much harder epoxy, um, and that will give it a really nice clean surface for the top. Um, and so this will then be UV resistant as well as be the top coat for it. And there are also the, the dyes that I got. Um, I'll leave a link to these all down below if you wanna see that. But I'll be doing a lot of videos on how exactly do you go about mixing this, how exactly do you go about pouring it, and how do you go about filling in all the cracks. So as you can tell, this is going to be a very big project and a lot of fun to work with. Uh, we're gonna have the joinery, the whole base will be put together without any hardware. The only glue in this joint will be attaching these two together as well as there will be butterflies connecting them and then of course the epoxy inside. Um, this, there won't be any hardware in this base. It will all be held together with gravity and I'm really looking forward to putting this together. It'll end up being a relatively simple project in that there isn't anything that's heavily technical other than maybe the epoxy fill, but even that's just taping it and filling it with epoxy. Even all the joinery is gonna be mostly bridle joints. It'll be a fairly straightforward, simple build that just about anyone can do if you're willing to experiment and play around. So we're gonna be taking this step by step and explaining the entire process and making one really, really big table. So if you have any questions, let me know. If you have any ideas or something you'd like to see me do in this, uh, please let me know in the comments down below or feel free to send me an email. We are going to be having a good deal of, um, of fun on this project. And uh, also, if you like this, please hit like. Go ahead and share this if you think of anyone who needs it. I do want to say thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why I can keep putting out videos like this. If you'd like to help out with that, you can click the link right down over there. Also, if you'd like to subscribe or see some behind-the-scenes videos on my second channel, go ahead and do that. That's about it for today. Until next time, have a wonderful day.